Robin Smith is her name. She is the co-founder of It Is Finished Ministries with her husband, Steve. They live in Southern California with their five children. Robin has a master's in both theology and biblical studies, and she is now running toward her doctorate degree. She is a grace-based Christian author whose passion for the Hebrew and Greek languages has launched what are now her two books. It is finished, awakened, and actually the third book, which she completed, which is called I Am Healed. So Robin, I'll just let you take it away. We are looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for inviting me on here. I was really excited to meet all of you. Um, I've heard about all of you from Crystal and just the wonderful. Uh, um, when you messaged me, Crystal, that you had read the blog post, the essay on redefined redefining our understanding I actually had to go back and read what that was because I couldn't remember and then I realized it was on fear um, it starts out with fear and you know fear has become a way of life for many of us you know we we definitely live in an age where it's gosh you can't pick up the newspaper you can't turn on the tv you can't look on the internet without fear being pushed at you really strong, you know, the, the pandemic, COVID, you know, the Delta variant, this variant, you know, lockdown, you know, all of these different things, you know, should we get the vaccine? Should we not get the vaccine? You know, am I safe out there? Got to wear the mask, you know, all these different things that cause fear, you know, and there's so many different fears, you know, even besides, you know, all of this with the pandemic, there's even a fear called the fear of a uh, somewhere in the world, I forget what the name of it is, but somewhere in the world, a goose is looking at you, not even like in your own vicinity, but somewhere in the world, there is a fear where some people have that somewhere in the world, a goose is actually looking at them. I mean, fears become that ridiculous, you know, where they can't even they don't even make sense, you know, they're not based on any type of reason. And Galatians 5.1 says that he set us free for freedom, you know, it was just for freedom, that's it. There was no other reason that he set us free, he just set us free to live free. That's amazing. You know, he didn't set us free so that we would serve him. We, he didn't set us free so that we, be be, that we would be better Christians or that we would live more holy lives, live more righteously. You know, he set us free just for freedom. That's it, right? And so Jesus destroyed the power of death and sin. And our only condition now is life and righteousness, right? We live only in the blessing. There should be zero fear in our lives. All condemnation has been removed. Sickness, disease, poverty, lack, addiction, anxiety, you know, all of those, all of those emotions in the soul, all of those are not biological of origin. They're all rooted in sin. And sin is that false distorted identity that we walk in, you know, not realizing who we are. Um, and Jesus canceled sin. He completely 100% canceled it. Uh, one of the meanings of cancel is to reject. He rejected that false distorted identity, you know, so that we could live in who he called us to be, who he says we are. Uh, he rejected that, that fallen distorted identity that Adam passed on to all men. And how did he pass it on? He passed it on through uh, things like, we do the same thing. You know, we, we learn from our ancestors. So we pick up certain behaviors, we pick up certain mindsets that they've passed down by tradition. You know, well, grandma did it this way, mama did it this way, and then we learn to do those same things. So we walk in this in sometimes broken identities just because we've been taught and that's been passed down to us. Not passed down biologically, not passed down through a gene, but passed down just through ways of thinking things that we need to change. So we're all free to be who he says we are, right? We just haven't been told that. You know, we were told we were born sinners, with that we were depraved, that we were lost, and we stay that way until we accept Jesus, until we ask him into our heart, we pray that prayer of salvation, you know, walk down to the altar, then everything changes. But the truth is, that's just what we were taught. We, we were never 
lost. We were never sinners, right? Because he did away with sin. So we were never sinners. We were never lost. We were never depraved. We were never any of those things, right? Galatians tells us that we are masters of all. You know, that's, I think, one of my favorite things in the Bible. We are masters of all. We are masters of our destiny. Ephesians says we are beloved sons and heir. Not just that we're sons, but we're beloved sons and heirs, right? There is nothing you can do that can take you away from being a son. Um, Genesis tells us that we were made in God's image and likeness. Psalm 8 says that we are crowned with glory and honor and given dominion over not some of the works of God's hands, but all of the works of God's hands. Everything he created, we've been given dominion. Romans tells us that we rule and reign in grace and that we are more than conquerors. This is who we are. This is who we've always been, right? But religion kept us bound to who they say we are. But he set us free just for freedom, completely for freedom, freedom to be who he says we are. We've been set free to share his identity. We resurrected with him. We resurrected in him. We resurrected as him right? John says it this way. He said, as he is, so are we in this world. So what's true of him is equally true of us, you know, and I know I, I, I step outside the religious box and, and, and I um, probably challenge your way of thinking just a little bit when I say that we are, what is true of him is equally true of us. So he is immortal. He is ageless. He is deathless. He is incorruptible. He is sinless right? He has dominion over death, has divine health. He's whole, perfect, and complete. And we tend to look at that and say, oh, that's so wonderful about Jesus. Well, yeah, of course, Jesus is like that. But so are we, right? Because we're in him and he's in us. So this is our identity with him. It's his, our shared identity. Um, that's really all I had for you. I wasn't sure how long to go. So I didn't really do a long thing. I really just wanted to encourage you in your identity that this is who you are. Religion may have told you something else, but this is truly who you have always been. I mean, we rose up together with him 2000 years ago. So this has been true of us. That's really I'm sorry. Good. Yeah, no, that is, that is really good. I mean, um, I liked how you started it about fear because we have been, I mean, we're being pushed. This is like, it's a mind game that's, that's happening. And, and it's like from every angle, like there is pressure and there is fear. So how do we actually apply this? How do we actually um, get this that we walk in it? Like, you know, walk in who we really are. Um, is that, are you asking me? Yeah, yeah I'm okay. asking you. Um, well, I know I get asked that all the time. Um, I think it's just, um, there is an objective truth and there is a subjective truth, right? The objective truth is his truth. It's who we are. You can't stray from it. No matter what you do, no matter your behavior, this is who you are. All of these things are true regardless of who a person is. A person could be Muslim, Buddhist, atheist, um, you could go on and on and on. But the point is that these things are true of all mankind, not just those who go to church, not this, just those who pray to prayer, right? Um, so that's the objective truth. Then there is a subjective truth. And that subjective truth is um, our experience in life. It's how we walk it out, right? And so we want that objective truth to become our experience. The way we do that is we continually behold it, right? We behold him so that we become, not that we become in um, the way we were taught with religion that someday we'll be like him, but we become in the fact that we look at him and we see ourselves and we keep looking at him until it's ourselves that we see, you know, because we tend to look at him and we don't really see it about ourselves. We think, oh, well, that's just the way he is. No, he wants us to look at him and see ourselves reflected in his eyes. And so we keep looking at these things. We keep meditating on them. We keep, uh, we keep thinking about them and talking about them and speaking them over ourselves and just meditating on them, just chewing on them, right? And then the more we do that and we agree with them, that's the most important part. 
sometimes it's it's just an agreement of faith, so to speak. You know, you see these things, you hear it, you say, okay, all right. Um, for instance, Lord, you're you're immortal. Okay, I don't really understand it, but I agree with you that as you are, so am I, so I'm immortal. Sometimes you're going to have to say that to yourself quite a few times, you know, until it becomes your reality. Does that make sense? We've been taught wrong for so long that we need to rewire our thinking. We need to change those, those ruts, you know, in our thinking that have been developed. And we need to change that and we need to shift how we see ourselves and what we think. And you're going to say, yeah, but Robin, I look in the mirror and I see that gray hair coming. I see those wrinkles coming, you know, how can I say I'm ageless? And I do the same, you know, I look in that mirror and I say, oh man, time to go get my hair done again. You know, but how can we say we're ageless? I can say it because he says it, because that's who he is. And so it's true of me. Now it's either going to work in me or it's not going to work in me. You know, I can either agree with it because he says it's true or I can continue to look and see what I always see with my natural sight and say, yeah, that's just too out there. And I can't even comprehend that. Or I can just say, you know what? It kind of is over my head at the moment. I don't really know how it's going to play out. But you know what? If he says it, it's true. And I do believe, Crystal, that the more we do that, the more our life here will begin to mirror that objective truth. I don't know if it'll be in this generation or in 10 generations from now, but can you imagine if this had been the truth that continued from 2000 years ago that Paul taught and it had continued on? Can you imagine 2000 years later where we would be? Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, you look at when Adam was around and he lived to what, 900 and something. And now the average age is what, 80. So, I mean, it just, didn't progress it kind of declined over the years but if we had gone the other way can you imagine where we would be right yeah it's according to what we believe it is it yes is. yes and so you're t it's um what you've been talking about is is um i guess where my mind went was to reprogram those programs. I call them programs, those beliefs, because love that. Yeah. And we have these programs, these beliefs that we have at a subconscious level. Mm -hmm. And those beliefs are, are exactly the way you are living your life. You'll see what you're, what you believe by what you experience in your everyday life. Mm -hmm. So everything that you're experiencing, do you like it? Do you mm -hmm. like what you're experiencing? And like, be honest with yourself. Do you like what you're experiencing. If there's something that you don't like, well, you don't have to stay that way. You can actually be like Jesus because you already are. And this is like, this is the stuff where I love Robin's teaching. It's like, she's constantly telling you who you are in him as him. And I can't say as him enough because that yeah. will throw people. I mean, <laughs> all of Robin's books, you guys, this is the book I'm working on right now. And I take it in little bits because her stuff is all very rich, very rich. And you have to chew on it. What are we reading? What are we putting in? What are the beliefs that we are, because we have programs and we need to renew our mind. We need to look at those programs and, and align those programs with who we really are. You know, like we are, if it, if there's fear, like Robin was talking about, if there's fear, we need to look at that fear and say, you know, what is Jesus fearful? That's right. You know, and how, how would Jesus respond to all of this? You know, and, yeah. and, and then begin to reprogram all of that. And we can reprogram the subconscious with uh, repetition before you go to bed, when you wake up, those are the times where your brain waves are at a certain state and you can mm -hmm. reprogram. And I know you guys know this already. Um, and another thing is obviously with the hypnotherapy, EFT, you can reprogram any fears that you might have. Um, Robin, I really wanted to, um, like, can you share some more about, um, I guess around that essay, you know, that essay about Adam and Eve, that you wrote. I don't know if you can just share some stuff out of that. 
Uh, yeah, anything in particular that you were looking for? So you're talking about the fall? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, Adam and Eve, you know, they believed a lie. You know, that's that's the enemy, right? The enemy, the serpent, right, is the lie. The lie that they were not image and likeness of God, that they were lacking something. And so they, you know, believed that lie. And then in believing that lie, their perception changed, right? Because our perceptions create our beliefs and our beliefs then create our experiences, which then create our reality, right? And we can all have a different reality. It doesn't mean it's the real, it's true reality. It just is our reality, you know? Um, for instance, you can have somebody who thinks something is, has, I have a brother who thinks something happened and it didn't. And yet in his mind, it's so real that it's his reality. You know, that's, he lives his whole life from that premise, you know? So our belief, our perceptions, how we see things create our beliefs, which create our experiences, which create our reality. And that's what happened with Adam and Eve. You know, they, they uh, were naked, right? And not ashamed nothing changed about them. And then you see that they're still naked, but now their eyes are open. Now they're seeing life differently. Now they're seeing that they're lacking something and they're truly not lacking anything. It's just now they have decided in themselves that they are lacking something. And so they're not really afraid of God. They're afraid of their own lack because it says, you know, they hid, not because they were afraid of God, but be they hid because they were afraid because they realized they were naked. So they realized that something is lacking here and they didn't know what to do with that. And so their perception of themselves changed, their perception of God changed, their perception of the world around them changed, and they continued to live life like that. And it says that Adam uh, gave birth, to, uh, Adam had a son, he gave birth, but he had a son and he had a son in his likeness and image, and it reverses those words of image and likeness, which to me says that there was a change in now the son, instead of seeing himself in God's image and likeness, now sees himself by what his father is passing down to him, you know, but the great thing is God left the garden with Adam and Eve. You know, he left with them. There was never a separation. That separation, Colossians, Colossians tells us in 121, that that alienation, that hostility was only in their minds. It wasn't, it wasn't real. It was real for them, but it wasn't real. Does that make sense? Yeah, like it was only in their minds. It was only in their minds. Yeah, it was mm -hmm. what they truly believed. And when we truly believe something, we reflect that. So the God you carry, he tells Isaiah, uh, you know, who do you say that, who do you think that I am? You know, and, he, and he's telling Isaiah to go back to the in the beginning God. And who is the in the beginning God? The God who created man in his image and likeness. But he says the God that we carry on our shoulders, you know, in our heads, that's the God we reflect in the earth. And it's the image that we reflect of ourselves in the earth sins that we've called sins in the in the church you know we, we focus so heavy on sin but sin is just behavior that flows out of identity that's all it is uh either good behavior bad behavior i hate to say bad but you know what i mean that behavior flows out of your own identity and your identity is either rooted in who god says you are or it's rooted in who you've been taught to believe you are or who you know, who the church has told you to believe you are, who your parents have told you to believe you are, you know, it's rooted in that. Jesus said, um, no one knows the father, but me, yeah. you know, and so mankind had come through after Adam, and they'd forgotten who they were as sons, they'd forgotten who, the, who God is as their father. And they began to take on these beliefs of all the pagan nations around them, the belief that God was angry, that he was a deity who needed to be appeased with sacrifice and offerings. And yet we're told that sacrifice and offering were not nothing he desired. You mm -hmm. know, he never wanted those things. And so I think we've been taught to read the Old Testament as seeing a God 
who is uh, destroys our enemies, you know, and the Jews thought when they were expecting a Messiah who would come and destroy Rome. And that's not what Jesus did, yeah. you know, and so yeah. in Jesus, we see a full picture of who God is, of who the father is, and never once is he a destroying God. That's just how we've been taught to perceive him. Um, I think we destroy ourselves with our own thinking. Yeah.